next guest says the music is beginning to stop or at least get slower in the musical chairs game among content streamers. Joining us now is Jeffrey Yang, Redpoint Ventures co-founder and an AT&T board member. Such a good guy uh, to have on. Well, a good guy in general. Hi, Jeff. Uh, but a good guy to have on uh, to talk about all these things. I actually I couldn't believe it. I saw someone say that uh, you know Comcast, uh, I guess, it would have been attractive to look at some of these assets. I've even heard maybe Comcast now goes after Discovery someday, and there's like behemoths, three of them left, streaming companies left when it's all said and done. What's your point that the, the chairs are, uh, that when the music stops, someone, there may not be many left at this point, Jeff? Well, good to see you. Thanks a lot for having me on, uh, on today. Um, you know, I guess my, my point of view is it's a little bit like musical chairs. There are a bunch of, uh, bunch of people kind of circling around. It looks like there's going to be uh, certainly uh, th uh, three people of, of real scale, both in terms of subscribers as well as content. And that's uh, you know Netflix, Disney, and HBO Max. I think uh, the new uh, Warner Media Discovery combined has the library and the subscribers to permanently uh, you know cement its position there. Then you got a couple others that have large uh, groups of subscribers uh, with other service relationships. That being uh, Amazon and Apple. And so you got to believe they're going to be there. And at some point. You know, you ask yourself from a consumer standpoint, you know, when do you read subscription exhaust and, and how many relationships do you need? You know, uh, it's not they're not fungible because content isn't really fungible. And so consumers are probably willing to have more than just one, two, three or four. But at some point, you know, they're probably not going to have seven or eight or nine kind of relationships. And so, you know, you know, we've been in this period where uh, the music's going there, are, say, there's say uh, six or seven chairs around, and now all of a sudden the music's stopping, and some of the uh, other people of, uh, of like Warner Media and Discovery combining to to form a very formidable player. Uh, and now I think you'll see a lot of uh, uh, other transactions happening uh, to try to get those remaining seats. So Jeff, we were talking about the action in both stocks and what we saw yesterday, and. Uh, maybe we'll, af after we talk about AT&T, we can talk about uh, what happened with Discovery uh, as well, because that ended significantly lower than where it started today. But, you know, AT&T initially uh, was up, got as high, almost got to $34. When it was all said and done, it was down quite a bit. Uh, and now it's down another 6% a day. This is, cannot be uh, what the company was looking for. And one of the reasons that is being bandied about is, is not only disappointment, but really some chagrin at the way the dividend cut was telegraphed and, 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 and how it was communicated to the street. And there are people that say you had to, you had to actually be pretty good at math uh, to, to not only go into the release, it wasn't right on the cover page, it, it wasn't outlined exactly what was happening, you actually had to, to be, like I say, you had to look at it, say it's going to be, it looks, says it's going to be resized. Uh, if they had been paying 40 to 45 percent of 20 billion, now they say they're going to be paying this. You had to do backflips to get to where it was. And, and, and the company knew full well that a lot of people owned it for that dividend, that that was going to be a key thing. So I, I think that has something to do with, uh, you know, people think that they were almost duped or that the company tried to hide it. And it's unhideable that it was going to happen. Well, I, I, you know, I'm not a trader. Uh, I'm uh, just looking at uh, uh, what the best is in the best interest of the long-term shareholders for both Discovery and for at and I think this deal makes a lot of strategic and financial sense. You know, uh, it was clearly a tough tape yesterday, but, you know, like I said, I'm not a trader, and I just look at kind of long-term. I think the, uh, I think, uh, the, the resizing of the dividend makes a lot of sense and still leaves it within the top 95th percentile of, of all companies uh, with dividends and, and gives us more flexibility for allocation of capital to grow um, to grow the business and in, in its core strengths and broadband and in, in business and wireless and 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 I think it also makes sense for uh, the discovery shareholders and and the new Warner Discovery will have right. uh, more freedom in capital allocation so. I just look at it, you know, over the long term, and, and I think uh, it, it'll be a, a, a really good transaction over the long term. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.